Fitch Ratings has downgraded Niger's long-term foreign currency share default rating to B- minus and notes that the rating reflects the continued deterioration in government's debt servicing cost, external liquidity pressures and also surge in fuel subsidy cost. Meanwhile, S&P Global Intelligence forecasts Niger and other sub-Saharan countries are likely to sit debt restructuring following forex depletion challenges affecting their ability to service their debts. Tosi Oshukoya, a co-managing partner at Commercial Partners joins me to discuss this stories. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Mr. Oshikoya. Yeah, thank you very much, David. Let's Fine. start off with the downgrade from Fitch ratings. This is just a short timeline compared to the downgrade we also saw from Moody's, the deterioration in terms of our debt servicing cost, the external liquidity pressures we are facing, fuel subsidies also gulping a whole lot. And according to the same line of thought, we lack fiscal stabilizers to be able to moderate for all of these. In terms of your reception of this downgrade, what are the likely best and worst case scenarios we'll see play out here? I think it's a sad story that um, Nigeria has been downgraded. Um, we've had about two downgrades now. Um, we've gone down from double B you know, to a single B minus. It's not looking good at all. It's a sieve where just, we are actually one notch away from having you know, being considered to be a junk bond. Mm -hmm. And that's really how, it has a far-reaching, you know, implication in the sense that if we're going to go into the market to raise funds, investors are going to price your rating. Mm -hmm. Right now, two years ago, we were able to raise funds at, what, 8% or 7%. I'm not sure that when the dust settles with what is happening globally in terms of inflationary pressure and Nigeria wants to go into the market, mm. we might not be able to enjoy such yield again. I'd like to take you on inflation now. As part of the forecast we have from the financial derivatives company, we're expecting about 21.32%. Uh, uh, we also have Fitch also saying we're expecting an annual average of about 19%, and that would later moderate to about 17.9%, 18% thereabout come next year. We're expecting the figures come the next 24 hours thereabout from the National Bureau of Statistics. How do you think this would also likely impact the next move of the NPC? So many are told in that we might likely see a retention of the current rates. At least the aggression or the aggressive move really has been to rein in inflation. Do you think it's now time to settle? I think they might retain those rates. Why? Because we're going towards the end of the year and they would like to see the impact of what they've done so far. They've raised the rates, uh, the NPR rate for two consecutive meetings now. Mm. So I would expect them to want to see how that pans out for the rest of the year. Uh, to the expectation regarding uh, what is going to be printed out tomorrow. Mm. I think that the energy prices and food prices will continue to drive those, um, those, um, the index in terms of you know, the price index. And what that means is that we might see it moving towards 23% before the end of the year. Um, unfortunately for us, um, that's not good. Okay, but again, it's better than some other countries in Africa. I mean, you're aware that Ghana is... 40.4%. Yeah, that's, that's, that's shock. That's shock. And again, Ghana expects that to moderate in the in the in the near the, term in their term next year. But I think that the effect of that is because of the base effect. Okay, mm -hmm. because now you now have a higher denominator coming on top of I mean coming below your 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 new print. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think that Nigeria is going to enjoy the same thing. But what that means basically is the prices will continue to be on the rise. Talking about the element of rise in prices, yeah. the floods have really come with some heightened pressure in terms of inflation, what would likely see play out between this month and next month. And we're also seeing the lingering fuel scarcity. We experienced that in Lagos. The northern states are still feeling this big pressure. Now, in terms of our production volume, the optimism coming with Forkett is also coming online. Do you think we'll likely be able to meet up with our production quota, meet the local demand here, to ensure that we're able to have enough of import. The import bill is also high as well. How do we begin to marry all of these situations and then translate it to lower inflationary pressure? So you need to understand that uh, we've fallen short of our production you know, budget for in the last two years. Okay, What you have is 1.8 million barrels. And that's why subsidy is and, unsustainable. And, and what you have, I mean, up until Focado came up uh, for 400,000 barrels, We've been in the neighborhood of 1 to 1.1 1 
million barrels, and that's not significant. Mm. You would also realize that we've not enjoyed, um, you know, the, the, the high crude oil price, because you would expect that for a, an oil producing country, you should be enjoying, you know, the returns from high crude oil price. But we're not seeing the accretion of that in our external reserves, obviously because of the, the shortfall in production. So even when you're able to meet up with Focado's uh, mm. expected production of 400,000 barrels, you're still short of 1.8. Fitch is saying that we'll likely see a continual decline, expecting that we'll close the year 2022 with about $36 billion uh, in our external reserves. And 2023, 2024, we'll see a sharper decline. But shifting the conversation now towards the report from S&P now, it's saying that forex depletion uh, challenges is going to affect our ability to service our service debt, our debt yeah. and that's why the conversation around debt restructuring yeah. is going to be tabled. You look at the likes of Ghana, it's still under the lines of Chinese whispers. Yep. Nigeria says it's not exploring that. So what do you think might be some of the scenarios within the West African region, the, really? David, as I say right now, they're actually going through a tough time and debt restructuring is, you know, uh, prevalent. I mean, right now, everybody's talking about debt restructuring from Zambia to Mozambique to Ghana. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't come back home to Nigeria and mm -hmm. we begin to talk about debt restructuring. Um, and if you look at it, it's likely because the sub-Saharan African countries, they've raised a lot of money in the last two years. Ghana have raised well over $10 billion, and they're struggling to repay that back. Nigeria has equally raised a lot of money. Mm. Our debt to GDP, you would argue that it's between, what, 38 to 40? The forecast is about 30. Exactly. 80 but terrible. your revenue that is meant to service the debt hasn't really been strong. Mm. Your revenue to GDP is about 7%. That's really low. Poor. So what we need to do is to look for ways of increasing our revenue generation capacity. We've not done that. Okay. So you talk about production moving up. So if Focado is coming to full operation, you would expect us to begin to enjoy more production and obviously, that should translate to increasing your external reserves. But we're not seeing that. I'd like to take you on as well in, in terms of this report now, looking at the currency devaluation, we would also likely expect Ghana has lost about 40 to 50 percent of its value, yeah. the Ghana CD. Nigeria, according to financial derivatives as well, in the last one month has lost about 15 percent. However, we're seeing a gradual rebound. Yeah. To what extent do you also see this uh, new Naira redesign also come into bear? possibly to prop up the value of the Naira, whether or not it has that potential, and other regional uh, elements that are also facing the same reality of dwindling value of their local currency. I think, for me, redesigning of the Naira is a laudable uh, initiative, but the timing also, I think, my concern is actually with the timing. I thought maybe we could have done it at a better time than now. Um, if you look at the implication of that, I think that it's going to bode well for Nigeria at the end of the day. You need to rein in the fact that there is an increasing amount of money outside of the banking circulation or the banking system. So what that means is that you need to bring that money in. It's going to increase your money supply too. Okay, that's one. Then secondly, what has happened is after the announcement of the redesigning, you've seen the, the, the naira or the dollar being under pressure. But that's likely because of speculation coming out of the market. You could see what has happened in the last two days. Mm. So Naira it's moved about 600 from that exactly. high of 800. When the announcement was made, I think Naira to a dollar was about 700, mm. and it moved to 900. Now it's retraced back to 700. So that means that if you had bought at 900, you can imagine how much you've lost. Mm. So in within weeks, it had gone up to what 30 percent. That's massive. So we continue to keep tabs. We continue to.